Hi everyone, my name is Amy Marish. I am a Principal Technical Marketing Manager at Red Hat. And this is OpenStack Commons. More specifically, it's an Ask Me Anything. And we're joined today to discuss PackStack by Javier Pena and Katin Kyrell. Javier, do you want to go ahead and start? Sure. Thank you, Amy. So, hi everyone. I'm Javier Pena. I'm a Principal Software Engineer in Red Hat. And we are going to discuss Backstack today. So uh, we're going to see what Backstack is. Uh, we're going to see also what it is good for and what it's not a good fit for Backstack. Uh, some history so we can be Backstack in context. And finally, we'll have a demo. And since the demo takes a few, some time to finish, we'll have an Ask Me Anything in the meantime. So. Packstack is a simple RDO installer utility. Um, some people confuse uh, RDO with uh, Packstack or RDO with Triple O, so we'll just uh, discuss it here. So RDO is a distribution of OpenStack based on what the OpenStack community provides. We just package uh, some of the OpenStack projects into RPM packages and then distribute them. Uh, Packstack takes care of it. They are setting up uh, an OpenStack cloud cloud based on uh, on those packages. So Triple O is another utility, we'll discuss it later. Uh, so Packstack is based on the Puppet OpenStack module, so we are building on top of the OpenStack community efforts in this in this side. Uh, we, uh, we also participate in the Puppet OpenStack uh, community by maintaining some of the Puppet modules and also uh, helping the, the community with uh, tests on, on top of uh, RDO. And it's mostly a good fit for CI and test deployment. So uh, the Packstack features make it a, a very good uh, utility to do test deployments rather than production deployments. And we'll see how, and we'll see why. So Packstack is, is great for simple and quick deployments. You will see that. So you can start uh, with a CentOS machine and you probably get OpenStack running in less than an hour. So that's good if you want to play around and, and do some testing and, or do some uh, initial learning. So you want to check uh, the command line interface of the OpenStack dashboard. It's also good for CI testing and we use it internally in the RDO community to, to run CI jobs. So we can test our own packages and because it's relatively fast to spin up a, a new VM and run a Packstack on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing. And it's also a, a low entry barrier for proof of concepts because you can create a single VM with, without too many resources and you can deploy OpenStack on top of that without the need for a, a large deployment. So that sounds nice, but there are also some cases where Packstack shouldn't be used. So for example, for HA deployments, uh, we shouldn't use Pack Packstack to deploy RDO because there is no redundancy in the components uh, deployed by Packstack. So uh, in the OpenStack world, we have uh, the concept of controller node where you can set up, for example, the, the machine that make, controls all the services in OpenStack. Uh, so Packstack will only deploy one machine for that. We cannot have uh, multiple machines and then have failover in case one of them fails. It's also not meant for, for production deployments because Backstack lacks some production ready features. It's meant to be a quick and easy tool to spin up a, an OpenStack uh, cluster, uh, but we don't want have all the features that uh, you will want to have on a, on a production deployment. We don't have SSL everywhere, for example. Also for day two activities, uh, it's not a, a great fit because there is no support for upgrades, for example. Um, you, not, you cannot uh, upgrade from uh, a, a train uh, OpenStack deployment to a Usuri OpenStack deployment using Packstack. Uh, you need to do to use either you're on your own or you have to use other tool sets. So for for all of those, we have Triple O. Triple O is another project. <clears throat> it's another community project uh, that is, is specifically made to. To, to work on all, all those uh, environments. So it's meant to have HA, it's meant to be uh, production ready, it's meant to have uh, the two activities. So this is, uh, you, you see that we have different uh, targets for each of the tools. So it's just some quick figures about Packstack. Uh, it's been eight years and one day since the first commit. Uh, 
the project was originally uh, based from uh, Ovid's installer and then it grew up on its own. But uh, as you see, it's been around for almost forever. Uh, we have like 137 people contribute over the last eight years. Right now, we have a team of uh, three people who are the co-reviewers. We have Yatin, we have Alfredo, another colleague, and myself. And even if it's a, a relatively simple installer and it's meant for some specific environments, it's still being used in 7% of the OpenStack deployments according to the OpenStack user survey, which is quite a lot, actually. So we have some, some good fans in the in the community. So that was a short introduction to Packstack. Now let's uh, focus on the demo, which is the funny part. Uh, in this case, we're going to we are going to use a virtual machine, a simple virtual machine for the tests. It's a small one with just two CPUs and eight gigs of RAM and some swap with uh, CentOS 8. And of course, we will need internet connectivity because uh, we, we need to download the, the RDO packages from, from somewhere. Okay. So this is the virtual machine. It's just a bare bones virtual machine with uh, CentOS 8 installed. See, it's the just updated to the latest patches, and we're going to start uh, deploying uh, OpenStack with Packstack. The first thing we need to do is go. We will enable the Power Tools repo, which is not enabled by default on a CentOS installation, and we will need to use it because some packages in uh, in RDO depend on it. Um, Next thing to do is we will install the RDO repositories. And the great thing is, as part of the RDO community, we are also embedded in the CentOS community. So uh, there is a, a release RPM for each of the releases of uh, RDO in, in CentOS. So we just need to, to type Janssen. Oops, sorry. Yam install center release uh, OpenStack Usuri, and this will set up the RDO repositories for the Usuri OpenStack release for us. Uh, for CentOS 8, we can uh, we can deploy Train or Usuri, which are the two latest uh, OpenStack releases. Uh, for CentOS 7, we can start we can install Train and all earlier releases. Uh, that's because uh, CentOS 7 has very limit some very limited support for Python 2. And the OpenStack community dropped support for Python 2 in in Usuri, so we cannot uh, we cannot try to deploy Usuri on CentOS 7. So that's it. Now we have some additional repositories. You see, uh, for example, we have CentOS OpenStack Usuri repository, and now we can try to install Packstack. But before that, that's an important thing that we may miss. Sometimes we need to upgrade. Uh, the reason for this is that there are some packages in the RDO repositories that override um, packages in the main CentOS repositories. There are, we try to keep this to a minimum, but there are cases where we need to have newer versions, for example, of Python 6 or Python CFFI. Um, finally, in this case, in this demo, we are going to set up a virtual, um, an OpenStack environment using OVN, which Open Virtual Networking. It's one of the. Uh, it's currently the yeah the default uh, network component for Neutron in OpenStack, and we're going to set up an external network so that VMs we create inside this VM can access the internet. Okay. This virtual machine only has one network card, and we will use that one as an as an external network so that so that uh, our VMs inside this uh, environment can access the internet and see works. So for this we need to enable the network scripts. Uh, by default uh, CentOS 8 will only comes with network manager but some of the operations we we do in Packstack to uh, to give us access to the external network require the network scripts. So we will disable network manager and enable um, network.
Now, Javier, I know we're doing an all-in-one installer. Are we going to pre-generate the answers.txt, or are we going to let the system do it? So, so we are going to pre-generate it because uh, the default all-in-one installation by Packstack um, does some things we don't want to, to do in this case. For example, it will uh, it will not create the external network the way we want it. So our VMs would not have access to the internet. Uh, so if the, the all-in-one setup is just one command, we just it just works. Uh, but uh, the environment it creates is slightly different. So now we can install Packstack. And that it's as uh, simple as this. We saw a lot of packages. There we go. As Amy mentioned, uh, if we just wanted to set up a very quick environment and, and let it go, we could just do packstack minus minus all in one. And this would use a set of default values for everything. And just after a few minutes, create the, the OpenStack environment for us. And, and that would work. However, especially for the network configuration, uh, the network configuration it creates is pretty simple. It doesn't allow us to, to exit this, uh, this VM. Uh, so we will generate an answer file and go through some options before running the installer. Okay. So this is the answer file. We have a lot of options. This is a, a, a simple ini file. Um, so for example, at the beginning, we have all these config whatever install. This allows us to enable and disable OpenStack services. In general, I want to keep them all, but first I will disable all the all the metering part. So kilometer run out will be disabled. But let's say I want to have uh, OpenStack orchestration, so I will enable heat installation. Another important parameter we have at the very beginning is uh, the number of service workers. Um, this is useful, especially if you have a VM with a, with, with, without a small amount of RAM and a lot of processors, because by default, Packstack will spawn as many processes for each service as processors are in the system. So if we have a system with eight process, eight logical processors, uh, or 16 with hyperthreading and all that, it will try to create so many processes for each service that it will eat up all RAM in our system. So we, we may want to reduce this one and set one or two to, for the number of service workers. Uh, in, the case, in the case of this VM, we have just two CPUs, so that's, that's fine, and we can let the default value. So we have uh, the controller, compute, and network hosts. We can, so that allows us to go beyond a single, a single machine. But that's uh, something we're not going to do today. And then I'm going to go for the OVN. So the default options for network are like this. So we just have a single uh, bridge mapped to the external network, but nothing else. What we want to do is we want to map the bridge, the OVS bridge it's going to create One is, I think. Let me check it later. So what we want to do is we want to map the external bridge to the network card we have in the VM, and and this will allow us to have this uh, external traffic. Okay. Next thing we want to do is we do not want to provision a demo project for us. So we will see later. Uh, that once we connect, we can connect. We will have an admin user, and from there, we can use multi-tenancy to create different projects and different users with access to different projects. And 
all those uh, projects will be isolated from each other. So we can have true multi-tenancy. In this case, we don't want to provision the demo, the demo project because we want to do it later on. Remember ENP. Let me check if that's. Oh. ENP one is zero. Okay, that's fine. So we can, while we are setting up, uh, while we are running Packstack later, we can check some of the parameters if uh, if you want. Uh, but for now, we have on the answer file we have configured it. And now we have to do Packstack minus minus apps. And just wait. So uh, now we will see that uh, it is preparing some uh, some stuff. It will install some packages, and then it will run like in three different uh, separate steps: the controller, the networking, and the compute parts. And it, yeah, it should take around 20 minutes if uh, we don't have any problems with uh, network connectivity. So we can start doing some discussions and answering any questions that uh, may have arose arose and during the during the presentation so far. Yes. Yeah, so Phil and I have been talking about the commands to generate the answers.txt and how to then call it. Um, so if you could show that in the terminal. Ah, and sure. Then he, and then he had a question about OVH folk OVH. OVH folks being in the Packstack community and the community is open to everyone who would like to participate and people come and go as far as their schedules and their companies allow or there's people like me who continue to be part of the community no matter what company they're working at um, or their job title so there's no way of for us to say why someone's no longer in the community or they could be and we just don't know their nick on IRC to say, oh yeah, so-and-so is no longer part of it because he moved on to another company or position and so-and-so took their place. You know, so that's part of being an open source community. People do come and go, companies do come and go. Yeah, right. So, but if you, what the answer yeah, file. Demon. So it's simple, plaque stack, minus minus gen, answer file equal Whatever, whatever name we want to use. So, my, I love txt. So when when we do that, we get the we get the new file, and then we can just uh, modify it. And then we we run with packstack minus minus answer file equals to the new answer file. Of course, I'm not gonna do it because <laughs> it was uh, uh, clash with the other one. But it's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and when I've run Packstack for labs and things, I'll set a super, super simple password as the default because the machine's up for a half an hour while people oh, learn how to yeah. use OpenStack. Um, otherwise, you're going to have the self-generated, hard-to-remember passwords, right. which are definitely more secure. So it all depends on your use case how much of that file you're going to be editing on. Yeah right. So 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 this is it. So you have this uh, config default password option that you can set to assign a simple password everywhere instead of the randomly generated ones. Actually, I have I'm, I'm quite happy, fond of this uh, configuration option because this was the first one I the, my first uh, real code stuff uh, I added it into Packstack when I joined the team like five years ago. Everyone always remembers their first patch. Yeah. Took me a while to get it <laughs> working. I like to say I have Python code in Barbican. Because <laughs> that was my first patches were in Barbican. Oh, I don't know if there's anything else you would like to know about Packstack, about why it's only meant to to be run on this kind of environment. Do we have any questions from the streams? I don't see anything in the blue jeans chat. Now double check IRC because Phil was asking questions over there earlier. 
Um, just an earlier question from IRC, and he was talking about, you know, the difference between RDO and Triple O, and we explained that earlier. I, because yeah. even I used to just go pack stack equals RDO. Um, so it's our pack stack, Triple O, as well as the RPMs and the repos themselves that people can use for the manual installs. So that's a little clarification there. Um, but then Phil also had the question of, does either Packstack or Triple O use the answer fi text file, which we just discussed, and can you update them while running? So it's we know Triple gonna... O doesn't use the answers.txt. It's got its own configuration. But can you change the change it while you're running? While Packstack is, is running, no. So what we could do is we could try to run Packstack a second time while changing some stuff in the in the answer file. Um, but that's a tricky thing. Sometimes it works depending on the change. Sometimes it no, it's not as fully. But it depends. What is what is what is hundred percent not supported and won't work and will break your system is if you try to run packstack minus minus all in one twice, because the second time it will generate a completely new answer file. So all passwords will be different from the first time, and then everything will crash. It will try to change to access uh, MariaDB, for example, with the same password as it has generated, because it will detect that MariaDB is running, and it just will it will fail. Yeah, and that's important to note that when you do use the all-in-one command, it does save the answers.txt so that you can then use it with that answer file command. Right. And that's very important because if something fails during the first run, maybe there was a, an issue connecting to the CentOS mirrors or whatever, then it's relatively safe to just retry packstack minus minus answer file with the generated answer file from the first run. But if we, if we try to generate a second answer file, then everything will, will crash. Phil, can you reword that question? He's got a question in the Twitch stream, mm -hmm. but I don't quite understand it to ask it. Now, one thing I will add about Packstack, if you reboot your machine, Packstack will come back up. Um, there are issues, at least in the past, that were with DevStack. We used to say it was a one-time shot use. Um, so Packstack has a little bit more of a shelf life for your proof of concepts than, say, DevStack does, because DevStack's real purpose is just for you to do your code, test it, and then tear it down. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's actually, that's why I, I didn't want to... Uh, to go with the defaults and, and use these, this additional OVN and, uh, and disabling the demo tenant options because, um, when you set up the, when you set up the networking like we did in, in the demo, uh, this will be preserved across reboots. If we don't assign the external bridge to a network card, then it's we will lose this configuration and probably some of the networking parts will not survive. So yes, as you mentioned, it, it, it can survive reboots and we can keep it running for a few months if we want to. Okay, Phil reworded his question. When you install CentOS, you have the option to set the machine up as a compute node. I'm not sure if it means compute as we think of in OpenStack though. Don't think so. I think it's yeah. It has to be something else. Phil, they could mean just as a hypervisor, not as an OpenStack compute. Yeah, that could be. Either that or something related to HPC, maybe. Maybe I know Cloud Nold names all his machines compute, which kind of mm -hmm. confused me when we were working through something the other day, because he was on his hypervisor and yet it was called compute. So I'm thinking that's what it could mean is that CentOS sets it up as a hypervisor and, call, and is referring to it as a compute versus the OpenStack compute controller type situations. I 
meantime, there's one thing we could do. Is we can check the the logs while the backstack is running. We go to the latest. You can see that the backstack has generated some uh, puppet files, and also we can even tail the the log file, so we can see all the puppet uh, code that is being run by Packstack. So you, instead of just seeing this uh, the screen, I mean it's nicer, but uh, it doesn't tell us a lot. So we could just go and check what the what the actual puppet code is being run at the moment. Now, does Packstack have any intent to move more towards Ansible like some of the other projects have? Not at the moment. Um, we, we've been happy users of the Puppet OpenStack module for a while. And if we wanted to, to move to Ansible, it would be almost a full rewrite. Okay. So in, in, in that case, we may, we may prefer just to, to use, for example, the new triple O standalone, <clears throat> sorry, the triple O standalone, uh, uh, deployment. That uh, also looks very promising and it's using Ansible. Yeah, I haven't played with that one. I've used OSA's all in one and I've done. So for configuration, it oh, also uses Puppet. Sorry, I think, could you repeat that? So for configuration, Triplo also use Puppet in the backend. For configuration part, it uses Puppet. Yeah. So for setting up, for example, in certain keystone configuration, Nova configuration, it will use Puppet in the backend. Yeah, it's, interface, it's using interface it uses Ansible. Okay, and we have another question from Phil. In 2014, it took a computer with four gigs of RAM and swap. Now it needs 16 gig just to be the controller. Where did all the resources go? We have a lot more <laughs> features than in 2014, just saying. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's mostly. First, there's much, much, many more features than there used to be. And then we have, usually with a default installation, uh, it's usually related to the amount of uh, RAM required by each worker for each service. So at the beginning, um, by default, each OpenStack service uh, used to start like one, two processes. And uh, if you wanted to have more, then you would have to change uh, settings manually for each of the configuration files. And now it's the other way run. Now, if you have 16 CPUs, for example, it will, sp it will spawn 16 processes per service. So 16 neutron processes, for example, make things much faster, but uh, uh, on the other hand, they eat up a lot of RAM. And that's also where editing that answers.txt file comes in, because you could just have compute, control, cinder, glance, neutron, and placement right. running, and turn everything else off, which again, will lower your resource consumption. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's now setting up Nova. So with respect to setting up repos, I would like to add one thing that uh, we should avoid uh, mixing the repos, uh, additional repos like ePAIL or RPM Factory with the RDU repos because they do not play well. So you can use those repos, but uh, before enabling RDU repos, you should disable those, else there might be some issues due to the package mixing. Yeah, we, we've had known issues, especially with Apple, mainly yes. because they may have different versions of the same package, and in some cases, it's, yeah, it breaks everything. And it's important to note that older versions of Packstack run on RHEL 7, and the newer versions run on RHEL 8. So yes. always double check rdoproject.org to see what repos you need to enable.
Okay, another question from Phil. As PackStack, especially the all-in-one, is designed to be a learning area, does it really need the massive increase in required resources? <laughs> Well, we, we try to keep resource consumption to a minimum from the pack stack point of view, but of course, I mean, it will only require as many resources as OpenStack services do. So, so if OpenStack services keep adding features and that requires some more RAM, there is almost nothing we can do to prevent them from doing so. And the all-in-one also does what it feels is the most rounded installation. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. if you just want to specifically learn one or two projects, well, you'll need your basic projects, but then you can just enable those couple other ones. Bill, I've got it running in a VM in VirtualBox. I can get you the stats if you'd like. I've also got it running on a rel box. Neither of them are real beefy. It all depends on what you want to do. If you want to run VMs on top of your pack stack and you want them responsive, yeah, you're going to need to put more resources in it. But if you just want to go over how to use the CLI, how to use the dashboard, how to put up a VM and just play with a few features, you really don't need that big of one. It's whether you want to actually run something like an application on top of it for a while. Yeah, we also need to keep in mind what what OpenStack is. It's a it's a cloud management platform. It's I mean it's not meant usually to to be running very small machines. So while I would love to to run it everywhere, I mean, there's places where it fits and places where it doesn't. And and in this case, yes, we Packstack allows us to have uh, an OpenStack mini cloud running on a relatively small VM, but of course we cannot shrink it down to, to the same size as Virt Manager does on, on Fedora, for example. Should be finishing, I think. So have you, have you tried it running on 4GB? But at least I have never tried it running on 4GB. On 4 gigs of RAM, that's, yes. that's going to be complicated. I think 6 is doable, 6 gigabytes with enough swap. But uh, less than that might be tricky. I mean, maybe you'll be it, saving it some on, services. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, that, that could be an interesting Minimal tech exercise. Tech. That's right. Yeah, that would be an interesting exercise. Wow. Maybe just tripping it down to the minimum with Keystone, Glans, Nova, and Neutron. Neutron. I can even, install even... it on 2 gigs of RAM. But like I said, oh. you're not going to really be able to do much on it, but you can <laughs> install it on 2 gigs of RAM. This is for work, at least. Do you remember what time it was when we started the installation? Mm. Good. And after maybe? I'm curious because it usually, my previous tests used to take like 20 minutes, but maybe my network is more loaded now. Well, you are streaming five. too, so. Oh, yeah, that's true.
Bill says 36 minutes ago. Nate Johnson wants to know, can Packstack set up Octavia and designate to run? No. No, no not at the moment. And we will welcome patches. <laughs> we had Actually, we had one colleague who was playing around with Octavia some time ago, but never... It never finished. And now that we are supporting OVN as the default networking uh, mechanism, it should play along nicely. But uh, we need someone to, to contribute the code. I, mean, I, would be, I would be more than happy to review that. So if anyone would like to su submit patches for Octavian Designate, the team is willing to review them and get them included. And that's part of community. If you notice something that's missing, talk to the maintainers, the cores, get help, you know, with a spec or a blueprint or just the patch itself and commit it. And remember, a negative one is not really a bad thing. And it's very rare a negative two will be given, except if it's really something that's not related and you're just trying to get something in that there's no way it's, it goes with that project. The negative ones are not bad things. They're a start of a conversation. Yeah, actually, for the case of Octavia and Designate, I mean, it shouldn't be too complicated because uh, it would be relatively easy to to test them in, in CI. We've had some other cases where um, people tried to add support for specific hardware. Well, let's say for a Cinder drive, specific Cinder driver for third-party hardware. And in this case, it gets more complicated because we have no way to really test that code and see how it's working. So in, in those cases, we used to ask uh, people who want to contribute such support to provide a third-party CI in OpenStack. And that usually is, takes some time. It depends Cinder on how does have some third-party... CIs and gates because the couple patches I've gone and done for Cinder, I think went through like 35 different gates for all the different drivers, yeah. even if it's not related. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty common. But in, in case of, in the case of Backstack, we haven't had anyone contribute a third party CI for, let's say, yeah, their NetApp uh, or their specific uh, uh, hardware or whatever. And again, we're talking about proof of concept here versus what you should be running in production. Yeah. Well, we're on Neutron. I think we're about done. So while we we're still installing, why don't we talk about the different services that we are going to have on our pack stack? Because I see Swift going by. So nice. let's kind of discuss, you know, what's heat, what's glance, and so on. Yeah, that's good. So um, the first service we will see is uh, Keystone. That's uh, the basic identity provide the identity service for OpenStack. So with Keystone, we will um, create our own users. Uh, also, each service will have its own uh, user, and it defines a catalog of service, a service catalog. So each each service we will discuss will have its own URL inside the inside the VM, and we can use it to access all its services. And, and all of that is stored uh, in Keystone. So Keystone is like, a, like the cornerstone of uh, OpenStack because everything relies on that. Then we have Swift. Swift is an object, an object uh, store 
uh, service pretty similar to S3 in Amazon and actually that's, that's been pretty successful um, then we have uh, Cinder is a it's a block storage right block storage service it allows us to create virtual disks that we can then attach to our virtual machines glance is an image service uh, it, it's mostly used to store um, virtual disks images that we will use to to run our vms so let's say we have a Centos 8 uh, base disk that we will want to use to on multiple ma virtual machines, then we will store it in, in Glance. Uh, what else? Neutron is the networking service. We can define virtual networks with uh, virtual routers, virtual switches, virtual everything. Uh, we will see a little bit of that later. Uh, Nova is the compute service, so that's the service creating VMs actually and doing all the plugins. So we can once we create a VM, we will be able to use Nova to plug a disk from Cinder. We can plug some networks from Neutron. Uh, Heat is an orchestration service, so we can use Heat to define some more complex um, objects and then. Uh, once we create this object, Heat will take care of spawning, let's say, one VM and plus plus a few networks, plus some other um, objects from different services, and we can orchestrate all of them. And the last one is oh, oh, placement. Yeah, placement is it used to be a part of Nova, and now it was extracted as a separate service. It's basically a service to let Nova know where it should place VM, new VMs or new objects. So it uh, it can see the, the status of the different hypervisors, how loaded they are, and using different uh, algorithms, it can define or de it can decide where to place a uh, specific uh, new VM we are we are booting up. Oh, see, we ended up the controller and network part, and then we have to compute. And the last one is Horizon. Horizon is a GUI, so it's a web interface we can use to manage our VMs. I think that is it. Yeah. I think the only one I didn't install when I did some tests recently was Swift, because I, I just wanted to bring something up, be able to attach a volume to it and so on. Yeah. But Swift can, is sold as a standalone product. Um, there and I think they're looking to do that with Glance as well. So some of the projects end up spinning out of OpenStack into their own thing. Ironic, which is the bare metal um, deployment project, is used a lot of places where it is isn't used as part of OpenStack anymore. Yes, the same for Cinder, for example. Mm -hmm. So Cinder extracted most of, most of it uh, of its functionality into a, a single library called Cinderlib. And it's, for example, it's been using the Kubernetes world as well. And if you notice there, it says heat cloud formation API entries, and that's so it can actually be used with Amazon. So you can boot up something and it can go over to Amazon and be installed. Actually, it's the other way around. The other way? So you can, yeah, it's the other way around. You can use, you can use can hit, uh, so cloud formation, uh, files you, know, you would use in, or the, the same API you would have in, in Amazon to create, uh, your objects inside an OpenStack cloud. It's been quite a few years since I was the heat engineer at Rackspace. All right. And <laughs> we are finished. Yeah. Just like we're done. That. Last, less than an hour, as I said. So, so now we have a, uh, an OpenStack cloud running on our VM, uh, but we do want to create some uh, some networking inside this VM so we can create our VMs and have them access the internet. So Yatin is going to take over from here and is going to show us how to do that from the command line. So Yatin, the stage is yours. So thanks Xavier for the nice demonstration. And now, first of all, let me 
pick up my three. Javier, you may need to stop sharing if Yatin is going to share. Are you sharing? Yet? We are using the same teammate. No, no, okay. I'm ah. using your same teammate, Jason. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so he's connected to the VM. So we can keep sharing from the same screen. Okay. So first of all, we will create a flat network that we will use for the external connectivity. We will use the OpenStack network create command. Just copying it here. OpenStack network create. We are using flat provider network and we will name it as name public. So we also need to create uh, allocate allocation pool. So since we are using an IP for example, oh, sorry. So first we need to source the RC file uh, with where we have stored the credentials for this uh, OpenStack setup that we have just installed in the tech stack. Now we will create the network with the name public. Just one little detail here if I may interject. If you or if you check the I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. If you check the command that Yatin just types, we specify provider physical network extranet. So this extranet is the network that uh, was included in the Packstack answer file as the external network. So let me just show you. It'll be the same. So we can see it here. Okay. So this is the network that was uh, associated to the external bridge. So that's the one we are using. If we decided to name it differently, we would have to use a different parameter. Sorry, go ahead. So here we have used EFCNet. So uh, now we have to create a subnet. So for, before, for that, we will be using the same network for our BREX, that is 192.168.122. So we will be allocating allocation pool from which we will be using the floating IP. So the gateway is same for whatever for this system is subnet range. Subnet range is 192.168.122.0. That same as this uh, VM. Allocation pool for which we'll be using uh, for our floating IPs for our VMs. So we have allocating from 100 to 150. And also we are not enabling DHCP because we are using this network for, uh, just for a floating IP. So whenever uh, a, a VM will use this network, there will be no DHCP running here. So no uh, IP will automatically allocated to the VMs. Okay. Now, uh, since our uh, network are created, we will create, uh, create the image. So first of all, we will download an image from Cirrus VM. We will download. You can download any image, like uh, image. Here we means that OpenStack image. We will be using to boot the VM. So you can download an uh, Ubuntu VM or C uh, CentOS VM, CentOS 8, CentOS 7, as per the need. But since the resources are limited, we are going to try the Cirrus image. Now we will. Now we will. Uh, image and upload it to Glens. Just my screen. OpenStack image create. Image create, we will name it as 004 hyphen hyphen container format hyphen hyphen disk at 2 count 2 
we are going to create a public and an file zero. So this will create an image and upload it to Glance. That is the image service. Now we will create a scenes. Uh, let me check if public key. Yes. So we can. We will create a key pair. You can name it. We will use this key pair uh, to boot our VM so that we can access it passwordless from our text tech VM. Now we will create a security group that uh, we will associate with the VM that we will be creating to allow some like uh, firewall rules like allowing it to ping allow to SSH in group create basic that's it now we will create a rule protocol TCP destination port 22 22 so you can create as per your need for example if you want to run some uh, web service you can associate the port enable the port 80 or 443 or any other port that you would like Now we will uh, want to enable ICMP on the VM. So we are creating ICMP rule. Similarly, you can enable any UDP port that you would like. For example, if you want to enable DNS port, we can create hyphen hyphen protocol UDP hyphen hyphen DHP port 53. So this 53 colon 53 is a range so for example if you want to enable 53 to 63 you can define it here now we will create a private network that we will be booting our vm from network create demo network now we will create a subnet so uh, when the VM boots, it will get an IP from this subnet. Subnet, subnet, network, demo network, network, subnet range. You can use any range here. So that code exists, yes. I use this network. And while we have this running, we've got a question over in the stream. For a prod cluster, is it possible to have combined controllers and compute nodes? Now, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. But what is your take on this? We should avoid uh, to combine all those resources in a production cloud because uh, downing, uh, getting down one, one node will down completely down all the services and nodes so we for example some vms vms are running on compute node so uh, if controller goes down vm might have a possibility to get still accessible in case of controller is down but if all are on one all the vms and everything will go down so we have to segregate all the services on different nodes at least compute services and content All right, and back to the demo. We do have about four minutes left. So if you do have any more questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll get them on. So, uh, we, so we created the demo network and we will press the network ID for it. Now we will create an OpenStack router to connect both the public network and the sub private subnet.
now we have associated both the private network and public network on this router so that we can do the netting part now we will create a floating ip from the network we have created with the name public sorry Now finally we will create the VM and I've done make and just one and thing if you noticed it's taken us like less than five minutes to create a network and all the parts you know from a base install to creating a VM. So we will associate provide all the required uh, op options like network ID, image, what we will be booting from, security group we will be using, key pair name, flavor. The flavor contains all the specification like how much CPU we will be giving to this VM, how much disk we are going to give this VM, how much RAM we are going to provide to this VM. All those configuration is in flavor. Also one more thing that uh, there are many operations for each and every command you can just type like I will show you uh, like for example OpenStack server create and I'm gonna help it will show all the options that we can provide to server create also there is too much documentation available for all these command line options operations that we have just did also one more thing uh, uh, we can see what the API is being hit in the background for that we can for example we if we see openstack server list okay so good our vm is in active state so it's running so uh, if we want to see on what's running in background we can just try to debug options and see what are the apis being running being hit in the backend there are too many things like it will contact the keystone it will so it's the main api which is pulling the details of all the servers on our nova service now we will i think floating ip list Now we will associate this floating IP to our VA. Now let's try to see if we have thing running or not. Good. So we have an access. We can ping our VM. Yes. At the rate good perfect so we can uh, without password we are inside the vm and if you can see that the network here is the same subnet that we have provided uh, the dhcp has uh, provided the ip from the subnet that we have given while creating the vm on the back side the floating ip is mapped to to this ip subnet ip so i think OVM, we have commands for ovn we can use ovn the ctl I think net sorry i forgot i And as soon as we run this command, we are at time. Yes. Okay, fine. And I so here we can see the thing. IP is mapped here. 192 to 192. Okay, fine. I'm done with the operations. If is there any query, I am okay to answer this. I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this discussion and question and answers on Packstack. And I really want to thank 
Javier Pena and Yatin Carroll for leading this session. And our producer in the back end filling in for Chris Short is Eric, Eric Jacobs. So thank you, everyone. And we'll be doing some more OpenStack in the future. We're also planning a workshop that will probably be half a day for manually installing OpenStack. And then another one, which will probably be a one-day event for installing Triple O. And also doing something shorter, like how to join the community and get yourself set up. So keep an eye on rdoproject.org for events and more information. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Amy.